Hello, I'm Judith Arcana, and I am now making yet another of the series which we are calling Tiny Movies. The tiny movies in this series are about my new book, Hello, This is Jane, a collection of stories. And with this one, I thought I would plug in a tiny text from the very beginning of the book, um, the classic stuff that you find in the front matter, as we say in the book biz, a note to readers. Some of the events in this book actually happened, and events something like some of the events in this book happened too. Other events in this book are completely made up. The characters, their names, their words, their attitudes have been invented. Hence the word fiction. The tiny movies are not documentaries, and the collection of stories is indeed fiction. So I'm going to read a bit um, from one of the stories um, in this tiny movie. Uh, I chose it because it's a converse, it's about, about and includes a conversation between two women, very good friends, dear friends, one of whom has just realized that she needs an abortion, doesn't know how to go about it. This is in the early 1970s. Abortion is illegal in the United States and she has begun to talk about her situation with her good friend. And her good friend has astounded her by saying, I have information for you, or something like that. You'll see when you read the book. So, the friend is saying, this service is set up to help women who decide to have abortions. Hundreds of women and girls call them hundreds every week, all the time. So the Janes have to be sure those women are sure, you know? And hey, in the realm of being sure, I think you should get a pregnancy test. And the woman she's talking to, Norma, says, oh, come on, you think I don't know my own body? I've got three kids and a cycle so regular you can check it against the goddamn moon. You should do it, Norma. You never really know unless you really know. Is that like extra innings at Wrigley Field? It ain't over till it's over? Yeah, it is like that, exactly like that. If you're worried about getting in to see your regular doc or what he'll say, no, wait, isn't he your uncle? Forget him. Uh, there are some women on the South Side doing pregnancy tests. You pay a small donation to cover costs, or you get it free if you need to, like with the Janes. I'll give you their number. For the abortion, the service charges $100 or whatever you can afford. I'll get you set up with a Jane for counseling unless you call me with good news after the test. I can't believe this, Norma says. My friend Sylvie is a woman who knows abortionists and women who do pregnancy tests, all these feminist renegades. Um, Syl, please don't think I'm chicken shit, but will you be there when I do it? Will you come with me? I don't want to go along. Don't think I don't believe you. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure they're good women, but I don't want to go along. Of course. Maybe when everything's so cool, we've got a big national monument to all the women and girls who've ever had abortions, then everybody could go alone if they want. Check in with me as soon as they give you an appointment. We'll get somebody to stay with the kids that day. The name of that story, it's actually a novella, is Sons and Lovers. Yes, I copped the title. You can do that in the lit biz. And I wrote a very long story that has many little stories in it, which novellas and novels will do. And in this case, one of the little stories is about Norma's choice to need to think about and decide, and then choice to have an abortion, and her friend Sylvie, who assists her and what goes on um, in her life during the time of the choosing. Um, Norma's timing is uh, fairly unusual in terms of all of the stories in the book, all of which are fiction based on 
what really happened um, it's so long ago now in uh, 1968 up to spring around, around April of 1973 in the abortion counseling service of the Chicago Women's Liberation Union generally called Jane. 